Chris Cantelmo here with another Daily Vibration. So I want to talk about the incredible visions that you have on DMT, unlike every other psychedelic. We've all done, uh, well, those of us who have done psilocybin, I've yet to meet, and people keep saying I have to try psilocybin. I've done psilocybin mushrooms at huge doses, over 300 times. I know all about psilocybin mushrooms. Every time you take them, yes, you learn more, but what you learn more is about the outside world, not so much about the inside world. These people who are taking these psychedelics and sitting in quiet darkness, listening to their own thoughts and think that people are talking to them. Come on now, people, grow up. Um, Terrence McKenna, God love him. I like Terrence. I like most of what he said. Most of what he said, he actually said in horribly complicated ways. The hallucinogen syntactical modalities. And I don't, I wouldn't even go on. I mean, we all like Terrence McKenna. He was a, he was a brave psychonaut, but because it was so, things were so illegal back then, the poor guy spent most of his time alone in his dark, in his room at night, tripping on shrooms and listening to his own thoughts. And, you know, again, God bless him. But, you know, the way he tried to prove that mushroom was actually talking to him, as if eating a mushroom meant that the, a mushroom would then talk to him. The way he tried to prove it, he would come up with questions ahead of time. And then with the questions that he didn't know the answer to. And then he would see what came to him from the mushroom. But use your brain. Is it possible, even possible to ask a question without intuiting some possible answers? So T Terrence McKenna, and he's a brilliant guy, does he actually think he, would, he was able to ask a question that he hadn't already thought about possible answers? And you know, I just have to call this bullshit on that. So, so anyway, this is a long way of getting to this notion that when we, my, the point I want to make here is that the interpretation of the visions, the psychedelic visions, have been completely backwards in the sense that people who haven't done a whole lot of psychedelics and are studying it, psychologists and psychiatrists who don't know a whole lot about psychedelics because they haven't done them, they just listen to what other people say, they come and say, oh, what you're seeing is you're seeing representations of things that have been put in your memory. And then when you do psychedelics, they come out in your memory and you, and you think you're seeing them in real life. So for example, when with um, shrooms, you, things get very elfin. There's a lot of uh, very interesting little, sometimes demon-like creatures that are, you see them sort of made out of, like plants become demons and uh, other things become elfin. That's because plants in, the, in a dimension that you go to, when your brain is, is under the influence of psilocybin, and I think what we're gonna find out is that what psilocybin does is it, at, at very high doses, is it interacts with the DMT receptors in our brain, but not, not quite fully. Like, you, it's, what's gonna turn, it's gonna be so fascinating to find out that the full DMT effects only happen when the perfect molecule, DMT, fits perfectly into the lock. DMT is the key. When it fits perfectly into the lock, you get the DMT circuits click on 100%, and then you, you can see all these other dimensions. And in a mechanism that no one has discussed, but it's gonna turn out to be the case, is that when you partially activate a receptor, you get sort of partial uh, stimulation. It's not an on-off thing. There's a notion out there that these, when serotonin interacts with a receptor or some other neurotransmitter interacts with a receptor, that is always on-off. It's not true. The brain is much more, much more complicated than it's been given credit for. So anyway, the notion is that, and, and in DMT, 
people see these spirits and a lot of them a lot of times they're dragon like and they're there's things that you've sort of seen before some of them just completely bizarre so then you have these psychologists and psychiatrists and these neuro neurobiologists and neurobiologists know the least about this who say oh yeah it's your brain just reactivating old memories of things from childhood these creatures that you've seen in movies and stuff bullshit it's the other way around people create those those creatures in movies and and uh, books and all that from visions they had as a child because my theory about DMT being the neurotransmitter of childhood we see all these entities out in the world when we're kids and when we're kids we assume that adults can also see them that's why kids have to see these things under their bed at night and and whatever little monsters and they say dad mom look it's over there because they as kids assume that you can see them but adults can't because when we're adults the dmt has stopped being produced in our brains but kids remember what those ghosts and goblins look like and alien creatures and when kids grow up they then make stories about those things it doesn't come from their just imagination it comes from reality so then these these real entities are reproduced in our movies and our books and our cartoons it's not the other way around it's not like the things that are in our movies and books and cartoons inform our visions of psychedelia psychedelia and DMT in childhood informs the visions that get represented in movies and books and cartoons in the in the future people have had it backwards and it's that simple think about it think about it you're gonna see it's true happy Halloween guys Chris Cantelmo here with another vibration